my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about the things that I sewed for the holiday that I've just been on. Um, so in my Sunday Sewing Catch Up episode 49, I talked about all the different things that I did get sewn up before we went away. I also talked about the fact I was up until about half one in the morning um, of the day that we were going on holiday because uh, I set myself quite a long list of things that I wanted to get sewn up. Um, so I've got all of them next to me and I've got the patterns and I just thought I'd go into a little bit more detail, almost like an August makes video because this is a lot of what I got made up in the month of August. I've actually got on two things that I sewed up in the month of August um, with my holiday in mind. So I'll let you know what they are when I come across that. Um, I've got photos and a couple of videos of myself, my children and my husband wearing the various things that I made as well. So I will pop those in as we go along. And where possible, I'll link the fabrics and the patterns in the description down below for you as well. Um, but yeah, I had lots and lots of fun sewing up lots of different things for our holiday. I set myself quite an ambitious challenge of various things. So my husband just kept on pulling fabrics out of my stash um, for fabrics that he wanted turning into holiday shirts. Um, I wanted to sew up myself some shorts. Um, I wanted to get some more um, swim sets sewn up and the same for Ruby and Lola. I had a couple of dresses that I wanted to sew up. Um, and a couple of tops as well. The top that I'm wearing, I wanted to sew up two of these vest tops for Ruby and Lola for when we went away. And I got this fabric from the New Craft House when it was their summer party. I went and did some fabric shopping, uh, which was really good fun. And I bought this, and then I also bought another sort of rib knit, which is in like a neon yellow. Um, so I wanted to use the pattern, the Zoe Tank and Dress Top pattern by True Bias. So I'll start with that. I ended up sewing two of these and then I also sewed up a dress that I had in mind that I wanted to take on holiday. So I'll just grab the pattern. I'll grab the other top and I'll stand up so you can see what this top looks like as well. So when I bought these fabrics, I had Ruby and Lola in mind and I wanted to sew up a couple of tank tops for them to wear when we were away. Um, when I got home, I thought that they'd absolutely love these fabrics, but neither of them were really up for bright fabrics. So I thought I'd sew it up anyway, and I sewed it up in the smallest size, but because this is a rib knit, it's got really good stretch, but it's also got really good recovery. So I thought even if I sew it up for them in the smallest size, but they're not keen on it, I should, in theory, be able to fit in it myself. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I think Ruby wore it once or twice on holiday, but I actually ended up wearing it more than they did. Um, so I've got a couple of tank tops now in my wardrobe. So one in this gorgeous like coral um, sort of colourway of the rib knit. And then this one um, in like a bright sort of neon yellow. It's a bit crumpled. Um, just to say at the start of this video, a lot of them are a little bit creased or crumpled because um, when we got home, I put them all in the wash and I haven't got round to ironing them. I don't like ironing. I've talked about that loads on my channel and I'll only really iron clothes if I need to for when I'm wearing them. Having said that, the shorts that I've got on were really crumpled, so I did iron them, especially for this video. Um, I've also had a haircut and my hair's just getting in my face at the moment whilst I get used to it. They cut it just a little bit shorter than I wanted it to, but I still like it and I'll grow to love it. And my hair seems to grow pretty quickly, so it'll be the perfect length, I'm sure, in a couple of weeks. Anyway, um, this is the other one that I sewed up. So these are the line drawings. This is the reason why I bought the pattern because I fell in love with the style lines of this dress. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I have worn that dress loads. It's quite clingy, which is a new sort of style for me. Um, but I really love this sort of drapiness at the bottom of the dress. Um, so I sewed up the cropped version, um, but then you could also sew up this version that stops at your hip. So this stops just at the top of the shorts. It's actually not as cropped as I thought it was going to be, but maybe, I can't remember now because it was a good couple of weeks ago when I sewed up. I don't think I added any length to the cropped one, but maybe I did because this has ended up, that looks like really cropped, like it would stop at your natural waist and this goes just beyond my natural waist. Um, I really love the style of this um, tank top and dress. I really love the neckline. And actually, they've done a add-on pack where you can do different shaped necklines. So I'll link that down below as well. But it's a fitted knit tank top and dress. All views have the soft V front and the low scooped back neck. 
um, armholes and necklines are finished with these wide bands, which is a really interesting detail. Um, view A has a crop length hitting around the natural waist and view B ends around the hip line. View C is a fit and flare tank dress with a centre front and back seam for extra shaping and the hem ending a few inches above the ankle. I love the dress version of this. I love the tank as well, but I really love the dress version of this. In terms of fabrics, it says the main garment and bands can all be sewn up the same fabric or using a contrasting fabric for the bands for added interest. Suggested fabrics include medium weight knit fabrics with 25% or more stretch and good recovery, such as cotton, spandex blends, t-shirt, jersey and rib knits. Um, and I really love the feel of the rib knit. It gives a really close fit on the top. So I'll stand up so you can see me wearing this one, but I have got pictures of me wearing this one as well. And I've also got pictures of the dress and I'll show you the dress in a second. Um, and I've got it on with these really fun shorts, which I'll go into detail about soon. So my natural waist is here. So it stops just below my natural waist. Um, and then the shorts just stop sort of on my waist. So this goes just beyond. I could try and tuck it in, but to be honest, it's such a short tank top that it just kept peeping out. Um, but yeah, it's got a slight gentle V front and then the back is more scooped. Um, so you can see the back is just slightly more scooped. Um, it was perfect for chucking on on top of a bikini or um, a swim top or a swimsuit um, for when we went for lunch or wanted to go and get a drink from the bar or an ice cream. Um, and it went perfectly with all the shorts that I took on holiday as well. So those are the first two. I'll grab the dress so you can see the dress. Um, I really enjoyed sewing these up. Really straightforward pattern. The instructions are brilliant. Really hold your hand. And it came together brilliantly, both the tank top and the dress. They were a really speedy sew. So I had this like really drapey rib knit fabric in my stash. I've had it in my stash for a while. And this gives a really beautiful sort of drape at the bottom. You can see where it's that fit at the top and then the flare at the bottom and it just gives a really lovely sort of drapey um, sort of effect on the bottom. Um, I really love the colour of this rib knit as well. I got this from Rainbow Fabrics ages and ages and ages ago and they don't have it in stock anymore I'm afraid um, but it's a really lovely bouncy drapey fabric so it worked perfectly. It's a really drapey bouncy um, fabric so it worked perfectly um, for this pattern really comfortable to wear i didn't wear this around the pool because it's slightly longer but i did wear this out to dinner in the evenings and it was perfect for popping on at the end of the day uh really comfortable to wear as well because of that rib knit fabric um so i was really pleased with those three makes even though ruby and lola weren't really keen on wearing these tank tops i'm really glad that i sewed them in a size that would fit them but also fit me and the idea behind using the smallest size it would still be slightly too big for them um, but it meant that they would have a couple of years, hopefully, of wearing the tops or at least a year of wearing the tops. But two new tops for me because they don't really enjoy wearing them. Um, they were just a little bit too bright for them. I need to train them up on wearing bright fabrics and bright clothes. So these aren't in any particular order of when I got them sewn up, but they're just in order of them being next to me. So I'll go on to the uh, shorts pattern next because that's what I'm wearing in this outfit. So it was a lucky find um, for whatever reason. I think I was going through my wardrobe and sort of thinking about what clothes I wanted to pack. And I realised that I didn't actually have a huge number of shorts in my wardrobe. I wanted a fairly loose fitting pair of shorts that could just be chucked on um, around the pool if I was going to go to the bar or go for lunch. Um, I wanted them to be a fairly straightforward pattern to sew up as well and I just wanted them to be really comfortable. I wanted the pattern to have pockets as well. So I'd met a friend for lunch and I happened to be a little bit early for meeting my friend. So I popped into my local John Lewis because uh, they've got a pattern section, they've got the great big catalogues that you can flick through. So I thought I'd just have a little look and see if I came across a short pattern that I liked the look of. And I came across the Simplicity 1887 pattern. I wasn't particularly interested in the trousers or the skirt option as well. I was more interested in this shorts detail. So if I show you on the back, it's view C. What you don't see on the line drawings there is that view C has actually got this tie detail because of the fabric they've used. It's quite a busy fabric. It's going to be tricky to see, but I'll show you on the shorts that I actually ended up sewing up. But yeah, they've got a little tie detail at the front. Um, I also really wanted a pattern that was flat fronted, but had an elastic in the back. Um, 
So I managed to find this pattern and it had everything that I wanted in a shorts pattern. I could make it in cotton, it had a flat fronted waistband, it had the added bonus of the really cute tie at the front and it also had pockets. Now, because I only found this a couple of days before I was going, I didn't do a 12, but I did sew up one pair first before I batch cut um, several more pairs. Um, and I sewed them up using this gorgeous cotton fabric that I got from Fleurieurs. And it's got this gorgeous sort of neon uh, background. And then it's got these lollies all over it. And they're really, really cute. The shorts have also got, I don't know if you can see because the fabric's quite busy, but they've got these pleats at the front here and here. They've got really lovely deep pockets, uh, perfect for storing things that I need. And then they've got a flat fronted waistband. And then there is an option to add like a tie at the front, but I didn't have enough of this fabric left because I used it for a shirt. And then it's got the elastic in the back, which makes them really, really comfortable. I'm really pleased with the fit. I didn't have to do any adjustments. I like where they stop on me. They're really comfortable. Um, you know, they're not too sort of um, tight at the front and they're not too tight at the back either. I haven't got a hungry crotch. So I'm really pleased with the fit of them. Um, this pattern comes in sizes um, US 8 to 16 and I sewed up a 12 which is the 34 inch bust, 26 and a half inch waist and a 36 inch hip measurement. I am a 34 inch bust, I'm a 27 inch waist so the waist was slightly smaller, uh, the measurement that I went for was slightly smaller than what I actually am. Um, my hips are a 35 inch hip. Um, but they fit me really nicely and because they've got elastic in the waist, um, actually even though it was slightly smaller, I still get that really nice comfortable fit and around the hips, there's a lot of room around the hips as well, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, somebody messaged me about this pattern because they'd sewn up the trousers and they came up, um, I don't think the size was very accurate for them and they found them a little bit off with sizing. I can't comment on the trousers because I've sewn up the shorts, but the shorts fit me really nicely um, going off those measurements. Um, it's a pattern that I really enjoyed sewing up. I would definitely recommend it, especially for the shorts. And I do really like the fact that you get all those different options within one pattern as well. So I can't recommend this enough. So much so I ended up sewing up a good, I think I sewed six pairs of these shorts in the end. So the pair that I'm wearing, um, to match a shirt that my husband um, wore on holiday. And then these are crumpled. These are really creased. I haven't ironed them, but I had loads of gingham fabric that I ordered from Abercorn Fabrics as part of my work with them as an Abercorn ambassador. And I got the gingham in lots of different colours because I actually want to piece it together to make a jacket. So I had a yellow pair of gingham shorts, super cute. And then this is the little tie detail on the front. Um, and then you just sew this little tie detail um, along where the pocket starts. Um, and then that just goes across the front of the waistband. And then you've got the elastic in the back. Really lovely deep pocket. So I've got a yellow pair. And then I used a smaller gingham check uh, to make like a purple pair, which I really love. They ended up going with a lot of my um, Ogden camis that I've got. I've only got a couple of Ogden camis. Um, but yeah, it ended up going with my Ogden camis. And I did a couple of outfits where I did a bit of pattern clashing and then I've got a green pair these were my favorite just because I love the color green same exactly the same detail elastic in the back flat fronted waistband tie at the front as well and the pockets and then there was a pink pair and uh, so the tie is actually open on this just so you can see so that's the pink pair elastic in the back and then the tie you, you sew them up separately and then you just stitch them where the pocket is there and then they just fold across uh, and then you tie them. They're not quite long enough to do a little bow so I ended up just doing um, that sort of detail. And then the final pair was this baby blue pair as well in a gingham. Um, I wore these so much on holiday. They were an absolute lifesaver for just chucking on after I'd been in the pool and I wanted to go and get a drink or something. Super comfortable, um, really lovely and breathable and lightweight as well because I sewed them in a cotton. And this cotton from Abercorn is really lightweight as well. So they were perfect for taking on holiday. And I'm not a shorts fan. I don't wear shorts when I'm at home. I only really wear shorts when I'm on holiday. I absolutely loved wearing these. So really successful make and I got loads and loads of wear out of them as well. 
and they're actually I think they would make a really cute little um like pajama set as well if you wanted to sew up some pajama shorts I think that pattern would work really nicely for a little pair of like summer shorts um for pajamas as well paired with a little tank top or paired with an Ogden cami you'd have a really cute um pajama summer set so the next thing is a refashion which I talked about in my Sunday sewing catch up so I had sewn up the Megan Nielsen opal pants and I'd sewn up the paper bag waist uh, pants. Paper bag waists were really in a couple of years ago and I felt really inspired to give it a try. Um, so I had to go at sewing up this version but they just came up absolutely enormous. They were really long on me and they, they just looked really baggy. They didn't come up tapered at all. I don't know if it was the fabric that I chose to use to sew them up because I used a viscose um they describe the opal as a relaxed fit high waist pants set with mix and match options pattern includes paper bag or standard elastic waistband inseam or patch pockets back pockets belt loops an optional belt and multiple length view a is a pair of tapered leg pants with paper bag waist and belt view b is a pair of wide leg pants with elastic waist and view c is a pair of shorts with patch pockets and paper bag waist and view D is a pair of knee length shorts with elastic waist and belt. So you can turn it into shorts. I actually ended up doing that after sewing up the trousers. Um, in terms of fabrics, they recommend bottom weight fabrics with structure or drape like a linen, tensile, rayon, poplin, viscose, satin, chamois, crepe, wool and chambray. So I used a viscose and they do recommend a viscose, but they just ended up looking really odd on me. They were just really baggy. Um, really big I just looked like they they looked like they didn't fit me very well so I kept them but I never reached for them and I in my head thought I must well one I must take them up because I couldn't wear them without taking some of the length of the bottom um, but then I also thought I might refresh refashion them eventually so that's exactly what I did um, I think I pulled them out and I was looking at what clothes I wanted to take away and I thought now is the time to refashion them so I just chopped off the length until I was happy so I chopped it off tried them on and then clipped where I wanted them to be chopped a little bit more off hemmed them um, I've still got the belt but to be honest I didn't use the belt I didn't need the belt at all and I've still got the paper bag effect paper bag waistband effect and um, but they've turned into a really cute pair of shorts that I did wear when I was on holiday and I enjoyed wearing just without the belt um, so I'm really pleased that I managed to refashion them and I've now got a wearable garment that I know I'll get wear out of um, in the summertime or when I go on holiday. So that was that pattern. I realised with the Simplicity shorts, I didn't say what fabric they recommend. They recommend soft, lightweight fabrics like a cotton, batik, lightweight sateen, chalice, silks, uh, silk linen, double georgette, lightweight linen, linen blends and jersey. I didn't realise you could sew them in jersey actually. That's quite handy to know. Um, but I'd recommend that pattern um, and I'm really pleased that I've managed to turn this um, sort of the trousers that I wasn't wearing into something that I did get quite a lot of wear out of when I was on holiday. So now for the fun part, the thing that I had lots and lots of fun sewing up and that is a shirt for my husband. So last year when we went on holiday, um, I felt confident enough to try and sew up a shirt for him to go on holiday. So I sewed up two shirts one that had tigers all over it and one that was like this tropical sort of floral and leaf print design. I'll put pictures in of those now. Um, and then this summer he asked if he could have a couple more shirts um, for our holiday. I think he had lots of fun actually going through my fabric stash because he chose four fabrics in the end to sew up some shirts for him. I love this pattern for a really simple um, simple shirt to sew up, simple shirt to chuck on, really comfortable and perfect for going on holiday. Um, so it's the McCall's M6044. There are lots of different views that you can sew up. I just sew up the really simple view A. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see the line drawings, but this is it. Really straightforward, short sleeves. There's no fiddly um, cuffs or anything like that. There's no yoke to sew on the back. It's a really straightforward pattern. The back is just cut as one piece. Um, and that's exactly what he loves wearing when we go on holiday. Something that you can just chuck on. It's nice and lightweight. And actually, at home, he wears a lot of greys, a lot of navies, a lot of blacks. Um, doesn't really wear patterns at all. But when we go on holiday, he absolutely loves embracing pattern. And that makes me so happy because I had loads of fun sewing up these shirts. Apart from one shirt, which I'll share in a second. 
Um, so yeah, I sewed up view A. This pattern comes in sizes small up to extra, extra, extra large. And I would say it's actually a pretty accurate fit. Uh, fits really nicely and it's really comfortable and he enjoyed wearing them as well. So I'll start with the one that matches my shorts in this really fun cotton poplin. And I did put a label in that says, I bet you look good on the dance floor. And that's from Hey Sir Sister. Um, really straightforward shirt. It's got short sleeves. It has got a collar stand um, and a collar, which is what he likes on a shirt. You can put a pocket on. I didn't put a pocket on because he didn't want a pocket and he didn't think that he would end up using it. And then it's really crumpled, but um, it has got the curve that you would expect to see on the hem of a shirt as well. And then the buttons that I chose for him were these baby pink buttons that I just got from a local fabric shop to me. And I think that goes really nicely um with the pink sort of lollipops this fabric is just so fun i absolutely love it and actually he really enjoyed wearing it as well um which was really lovely to see so that was the first one really lovely to sew up because it's a cotton poplin it pressed beautifully the collar was an absolute delight to sew buttonholes went in perfectly the next one is a satin fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics in this bright pink. There's a theme with some of these shirts, but it's a bright pink fabric. This was an absolute pain to sew. The satin fabric frayed so much. It was an absolute pain. I didn't enjoy sewing this shirt up at all. He really enjoyed wearing it. He wore it in week two of our holiday when he'd got a bit of a tan. But this fabric's just so fun. I love the colour of it. I love those tigers all over it as well. Um, and buttons, what did I end up going? Oh, I just went with a pink. So I think because this fabric is such a bright fabric, I didn't want to go for a button that was going to really stand out because I just wanted the fabric to really um, be showcased. Um, he really enjoyed wearing this and he said it was a really comfortable um, garment to wear as well. Um, so I'm glad that I persevered with the satin. The next one was a cotton poplin and I've got a dress that matched. He's not a massive fan of matching with, with me, um, but I did manage to get some photos of us wearing matching outfits. Um, but this was a beautiful cotton fabric from Simi Sunshine. It's called Boating Away. Such a lovely design. And I just, as soon as I saw it, I thought that needs to be turned into something that we can wear on holiday. Um, I just think it's really fun. It's got palm trees. It's got the beautiful bright flowers that you come to expect when you go abroad. Um, it's got little boats on it. I just thought it was a really beautiful fabric. So I turned it into a shirt. Actually, I turned it into a dress for me first. And then my husband saw my dress and asked if I had any of the fabric left. And could I turn it into a shirt for him? I managed to just squeeze it out because this pattern is a really straightforward pattern. You've only got the um, back bodice piece and then you've got two front pieces. You've got collar stand and the collar and the sleeves and that's it and you could cut out a pocket as well if you wanted to so I did manage to eke it out of the fabric I think I might have had to take just a little bit off the length of the shirt but it was still a really lovely fit and a really lovely length for him as well for this one I went with green buttons um sort of a greeny blue because they remind me of the color of the ocean um and he loved wearing that one as well that's the least sort of bright and out there shirt and he really enjoyed wearing that one and then the final one was the viscose. Now, this is super creased. Uh, you can see how super creased it is. But this is a gorgeous viscose that I got from, I think I got this from Stitch and Ink. If they've got any left, I'll link it down below. But I just thought this was a really fun fabric. I got this to sew a dress for myself, but as soon as my husband saw it, he asked if I could turn it into a shirt for him, um, which I'm always up for if he asks me to use some fabric to turn into things for him to wear. I love making things for my family and seeing them wear those things that I've made as well. It's exactly the same. Uh, what buttons did I go for with this one? Oh, I went for a blue button with this one to match that gorgeous blue there. Uh, so I've got buttons all the way down the front. It's got really short uh, sleeves. It's got the collar stand and the collar. And I did put in a label for this one as well that says, you're the zest. Did I put one in this one? Oh yeah, I did. I, got, I put a unique label in that one. 
I didn't put one in this one because it was such a nightmare to sew. I didn't want to have to put a label in that as well. I was just really pleased to get to the end of sewing that one. So he loved wearing the shirts on holiday, which was just lovely for me to see. Um, it really brings me joy when I see my family wearing things that I've made for them. Um, so I think this is going to be become a bit of a tradition of sewing him some holiday shirts every time we go away. And I would highly recommend this pattern as well. So it's the McCall's M604 ball. So let's go on to swimwear next. So there were two patterns that I used. One pattern I used last year, which I absolutely love. And if you are umming and ahhing about making your own swimwear, you're unsure on where to start or what pattern to use, I would highly recommend the Helen's Closet Sandpiper um, costume. Well, it's, two, it's a two-piece. Let me grab the pattern. I love Helen's Closet um, patterns. Her instructions are amazing. They really guide you through the sewing process. I absolutely love sewing this pattern up. So it's the Sandpiper costume. I keep saying costume, but it's actually a two-piece. Uh, so you've got quite a sporty sort of top and then different uh, bottoms that you can sew up. This comes in sizes 0 to 34. Um, I absolutely love this pattern. I sewed it up last year for myself and Ruby and Lola, and I sewed it up again this year for, for, for us all as well. Um, it fits beautifully. You feel really well supported. It's really comfortable. You can still move really nicely in it as well. And the instructions are absolutely fantastic. So I'd really recommend this as a first sort of swimwear pattern if you're umming and ahhing about which pattern to start with. So these are the different options. So you've got this option was what Ruby and Lola prefer because it looks almost like a swimsuit set. So you've got um, the top, which is kind of like a sporty look, and then you've got a band on it. And then you've got high-waisted bottoms with a band as well. So together they end up looking almost like a swimsuit and you get loads of coverage with it. And then you've got this one where the bottoms don't have a band on. You just fold over the elastic and then you've got the top with the band as well. And then you've got a deep band or you've got a narrow band that you can sew on as well. Um, so the Sandpiper swimsuit is the ultimate sporty two-piece for swimming, water sports and fun in the sun. Choose high-waisted or low-rise bottoms and mix and match them with the Sandpiper swimsuit top. View A features a band finish on the top and bottoms and view B features a wider band on the top and an elastic finish on the bottoms. The neck, arm and leg openings are all finished using swimwear elastic and Sandpiper is quick to make and a great option for people who are sewing their first ever swimsuit. I would absolutely say that is 100% true. It's really easy to sew up, sews quite quickly and if it's your first time sewing up swimwear, it really is a brilliant pattern. I cannot recommend it enough. I really enjoyed sewing it. It says that you can make the Sandpiper swimsuit top as a workout tank or cute crop top as well. So you could try it in an athletic knit or stretch jersey. And actually, um, I've worn a couple of the Sandpiper swim sets that I have made, the top part, just to bed um, when the weather's been quite warm and it's really comfortable to wear as like, um, you know, like almost like pyjamas. Um, but I could also see it working really well as a top for like working out. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend swimwear stretch knits with at least 50% stretch horizontally and vertically. Look for nylon or polyester knits with high spandex content. You may want to look for chlorine resistant fabrics for swimming pools and or fabrics with a UPF rating over 30 for sun safety. Swimwear lining provides extra comfort and coverage in your swimwear. It's optional, but recommended. And they recommend that you look for stretchy nylon or polyester fabric specifically labeled as swimwear or swimsuit lining. You can also line the sandpiper in lightweight power net or firm power mesh for more support. So I had lots of fun sewing these up. The girls had lots of fun uh, choosing their fabric as well. So Lola went with this one. This was from Little Legs Fabric. They don't have this in stock anymore, but they do have lots of really fun uh, swimwear fabrics in stock. So I will link them down below. So this one is a navy background and it's got neon jungle animals all over it. So I sewed the one with the deep hem band for the top and then the bottoms I've sewed it with the deep band as well so it just looks like a swim like a swimming costume when they've got them on uh, so that's Lola's and I did use some lining that I got from like so amazing so if they've got any lining fabric left I'll link them down below because it was really reasonably priced the swimwear elastic the best place I found to buy it for the elastic that I feel is the most comfortable um, was Amazon I'll link it down below 
I'll grab the brand that I use in a second just so you can see. Um, but I've tried lots of different brands and this is the one that I find is the most comfortable and the softest. Ruby's autistic, so it's really important the clothes are really soft on her as well. So I've had to try lots of different elastics um, to find the one that's the least sort of um, harsh on her skin. And this one she really loves. It feels really comfortable. So that was Lola's. And then Ruby chose this really fun uh, Rainbow Hearts fabric, again from Little Legs Fabric. Um, and then I used the same uh, lining fabric that I got from Like So Amazing. Exactly the same design. So it's got a deep hem and then the same for the bottoms. They've got the deep hem as well. So it looks like a swimming costume when they're wearing them. Um, I really love that fabric. I think it's really fun. When I sew up the swimwear for Ruby and Lola, what I tend to do is I sew up the smallest size that the sandpiper comes in. But with Lola, I just use a bigger seam allowance. So it is a little bit more tapered to her body. Um, for Ruby, the smallest size fits her really nicely. So it's a really great pattern if you're thinking about sewing for teens as well. And then for me, I absolutely loved this um, swimwear fabric from Felicity Fabrics. It's a shimmer fabric. They've still got this in stock, so I'll link it down below. And if you buy from Felicity Fabrics, you can get 10% off um, just using the code Liz10 because I blog for them. So they've given all the bloggers a discount code that we can share with everybody. So you can get 10% off your order using that code. So I love this fabric. It's got a slight shimmer to it. I used the low rise uh, bikini pattern, but I did put the band on. And then for the top, it's exactly the same as Ruby and Lola's. Um, and I've got the band on there for me as well. And in terms of lining mine, I just use the same fabric as the outer fabric to line it. And it works really nicely. It gives a really snug fit across the bust. And I don't feel like I'm going to fall out at all. Um, and then I got some fabric from Stitch and Ink. They have um, a few different uh, swimwear fabrics um, over on their website. If they've got this one left, I'll link it down below for you. It's a really fun, uh, it's on a white background, but it's got these really bright neon fruits all over it. And I just think it's a really fun print. So same top with the band on, and then where have I put the bottoms? Are oh, they here? And then the bottoms are here with the band on as well. And again, I just use the same fabric to line my bikini because uh, I ran out of lining fabric. And last year when I sewed up our sandpipers, I just used the same fabric on the inside and it just works perfectly. So that was the first swimwear pattern and I would highly recommend that pattern. I know I keep on saying that, but it really is a brilliant pattern to sew up, especially if it's your first experience of sewing up swimwear. And then the second pattern that I sewed up was the Tilly and the Buttons um, Coralie swimsuit. So I sewed up the swimsuit, but I also sewed up the bikini. Now, this is a great pattern, but I didn't find it as straightforward to follow as I did the sandpiper. So if you haven't got an experience of sewing up swimwear, I think they do have some tutorials to follow. Um, but this took me a little bit longer. It's a little bit more fiddly. Um, and the instructions where you add the binding with the ruffle um, had me scratching my head a little bit. That could have been because I was sewing it about one o'clock in the morning. Um, but I just thought, let you know, that's my experience of sewing this up. I did find it a little bit more fiddly to sew up than the sandpiper. So the Coralie, you can sew up the swimsuit, um, you can sew up the bikini, and then you can sew up the swimsuit with the ruffle, and you can sew up the bikini with the ruffle as well. So I sewed up a swimsuit with myself in mind I wanted to wear this swimsuit myself and I used some really gorgeous fabric from um Sumi Sunshine it's this really fun uh sort of retro wiggly um sort of wiggly lines uh swimwear fabric and I sewed up the um I was gonna say the bikini I did sew up the bikini I sewed up the swimsuit with the ruffle all the way down the back as well and I've got the low back detail now, for whatever reason, I found it tricky getting the gathers even on the ruffle. Again, I think that's because of the time um, that I was sewing it. I was very, very tired when I was sewing this, but I just wanted to get it finished when we went away. So there's some places where I've got the ruffle really even. I'm going to use this as a twirl, but actually it fits Lola and Lola really enjoyed wearing it when we were on holiday. Um, I found the instructions for attaching the ruffle and the binding a little bit of a head scratcher and actually now that I've sewn it up once next time I think I would just do my own method of sewing it 
Um, so there was a binding that you attached the ruffle to the binding and then you attached it to the swimsuit. Um, that was my understanding. I found it really confusing. Um, so next time I think what I would do, I'm going to extend the length of the ruffle because I just didn't feel like there was enough fabric in there. Now it could have been that this fabric actually hasn't got as much stretch as I think you're supposed to have for swimwear fabric. It feels like quite a firm swimwear fabric. Um, and I should have sized up because actually I, I get into this, but it's a bit of a squish. It really squishes my bust and I have to sort of wiggle past my hips, which is why I've given it to Lola. I don't know if that was, I don't know if I've sewn the fabric the wrong way. I don't think I have because it looks like there's the same amount of stretch both ways. Um, but it's just a really firm fabric. So I'm not quite sure what went wrong there. I did use swimwear lining for this swimsuit as well. What I did realise when we got on holiday was I've inserted the elastic like you're supposed to, to the armholes, but then you're supposed to fold it in on itself and top stitch. And I completely missed that step. No idea why, um, but I need to go and um, sort of tuck that on the inside and just top stitch that area. Um, it was a little bit silly of me. Um, but going back to the ruffle, I think when I make this again, because I am going to give it another try um, with a different swimwear fabric, I'm just going to make the ruffle longer um, and then I'm going to stitch the ruffle in place first and then I'm going to attach the binding and see if that works. Um, an alternative method, I think, what I could do is put the ruffle on, attach some swimwear elastic along there although actually I can't because you need the binding to provide the strap for the shoulder. Um, I'm going to have a little think about how else I could attach the ruffle. Um, but if you've sewn this up, I'd be really interested to know what your thoughts and experiences were with the pattern. Um, and then I also already had a bikini set cut out. Um, and also I didn't try the swimsuit on until I got on holiday and that's when I realised it was a little bit too small for me but then Lola really enjoyed wearing it so that was absolutely fine. Um, I had more success fitting the bikini than I did to the swimsuit and I don't know if that's down to the fabric that I used. This felt like a softer swimwear fabric. This feels like it's got a little bit more stretch. So this fabric was from Fabric Godmother. It's a really fun fabric. It's got lemonade um, glasses all over it. I absolutely love it. So I sewed up the bikini for the Coralie. So I've got the ruffle um, on the back as well. Um, and I just used the swimwear lining that I got from Like So Amazing for that. This fits me really nicely and I feel like I've got quite a lot of support. I didn't put the shelf bra in the swimming costume and I didn't put the cups in the swimming costume or the bikini either. And I do feel like I've got a lot of support from the bikini. And then this was the bottoms. I really like the bottoms. I went for the high-waisted with the band on. Um, I just think that fabric's really, really fun. And I really enjoyed wearing the bikini on holiday. So it's the swimming, the swimming costume that I feel like I need to go back um, and just have a play around with the fit. And also thinking about that ruffle, I'm gonna try a different method of attaching the ruffle um, and see how I get on with that as well. Um, so that was my experience sewing up the Tilly and the Buttons Coralie swimsuit and also the bikini. So I've got two more things that I want to share with you and they're both dresses. So I'm going to start with the Dear and Joe My Sotis because this has become a bit of a tradition for myself when I go on holiday as well. So I sew up swimsuits for uh, myself, Ruby and Lola. I sew up shirts for my husband and the tradition for myself is sewing up a Dear and Doe My Sotis dress for when we go away as well. And I got this absolutely beautiful um, viscose fabric from Felicity Fabrics. I love green. I'm always talking about how much I love the colour green. And I just thought this fabric was so beautiful with those flowers. And it's a viscose and it feels really lovely and lightweight. And it also feels really soft like a cotton lawn. Um, so I thought this would be perfect for a dress to wear when we're on holiday. So I went to my favourite pattern. Love the myosotis. I love how it fits. I love how it feels. The bodice feels fairly fitted, but then the skirt is nice and loose and floaty. So it was perfect for wearing on holiday where I knew it was going to be hot. 
Um, I sewed up this version with the ruffle on the bottom. I didn't sew the ruffle on the sleeves because I thought that might be a little bit too fussy for going on holiday. Um, I sewed the mandarin collar and then it's got the buttons as well. I love everything about this dress. It's such a comfortable dress. I love the button down detail, so it feels a little bit special. But then I also love the fact that it's got this really lovely gathered skirt that's got this ruffle on the bottom as well, because I absolutely love a ruffle. So this is um, creased. I've said that about most of the things that I'm sharing with you, but I've got the buttons down here and I just used green buttons. Um, and then it's got the gathered skirt and then it's got the ruffle on the bottom as well there. And then I just went for the short sleeves with no ruffle on because I didn't want it to be too fussy. Um, I really enjoyed wearing this on holiday. It felt really comfortable to wear as well. Um, and just a really lovely lightweight dress to wear out to dinner in the evenings. So I put some pictures in of me wearing that dress. This fabric was an absolute dream to sew with. And if they've got any left, I'll link it down below for you. Um, but I just loved that green background with the flowers all over it. I love how the green really makes the flowers pop. It's really, really pretty. And then the final dress I wanted to share with you is a hack of the Helen's Closet Reynolds dress, which is this pattern here. Um, it's a top and dress pattern. It's aimed at advanced beginners and it comes in sizes 0 to 34. I absolutely love this pattern um, as sort of a base for um, creating other sort of dresses from this. I find the top part particularly a really great sort of base for hacking the pattern. So I've used the top to make some um, sort of tiered, gathered summer dresses. And then I use the top as a base for mashing together the Helen's Closet Reynolds dress, or the top part, should I say, with the True Bias um, Maeve skirt, because I really love the tears that you get from the Maeve skirt. So that's what I wanted to do. I really wanted to get this finished to take part in the Sew Mashup Challenge, um, which was a challenge being hosted over on Instagram by Kath and Sally, but I didn't get a chance to get that um, sewn up in time. So in the end, I knew I wanted to take it on holiday with me. So I took my time because I knew that I wouldn't meet the deadline for the Sew Mashup Challenge. Um, and I had lots of fun playing around with adding trims to the dress as well. So I started with the top of the Reynolds and I wanted that to stop sort of at my natural waist. And then I just used the tears from the True Bias Maeve skirt to add on a gathered maxi skirt onto the bottom of the top just to create a really lovely, lovely summery maxi dress for when we went away. Um, so I mashed the two patterns together and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Um, another change that I made to the pattern, so the Reynolds dress has got these wide straps. So instead of having the wide straps that are attached at the front and the back bodice, I wanted to have ties on the strap. So I just sewed the straps. I used the strap pattern piece and I cut them out so I could have a front strap and a back strap. Um, and then I just tied them together at the top on both sides. Um, and then what I wanted to do was I wanted to add some rickrack across the bodice. So I've got rickrack that goes all the way along the top, down where the armholes are, and also round to the back. And then I had this gorgeous um, trim that I got from New Craft House. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's a broderie anglaise, anglaise trim. So it had a raw edge, so I overlocked the raw edge and then I just top stitched it in place. This has created some ties for the top tier because uh, I felt like it just needed something to bring it in at my waist. Um, and then I just added the um, Maeve skirt onto the bottom. So I used the maxi length Maeve skirt pattern pieces and it has got a, a narrower um, tier in the middle. And then in between the tiers, I just added that really pretty embroidery anglaise trim all the way across the tiers um, at the front and also at the back and then at the bottom I wanted to finish the hem with some more of the rickrack trim just along the bottom I felt like it gave it a really lovely finish and it sort of tied in all the little details that I've got on the dress so I had the rickrack at the top and the rickrack at the bottom and then I had this trim for the tears, and then this tie came across the first tier. So I ended up with the trim across all of the tiers, but it also helped to create a little bit of shaping as well. 
It's a bit tricky to show you on camera, but I have got pictures of me wearing this dress as well. I think I might have got a little video of me wearing it as well. So I'll insert the video and I'll also insert the picture of me wearing it as well, just so you can see what it looks like. So that was everything that I got sewn up for our holiday. There were lots of other patterns and garments that I love going to for summer holidays, like the Tilly the Button Sky Dress. And I sewed those up last summer for my holiday and they were perfect to wear again, just as a chuck on uh, once I'd been in the pool and I wanted to go and get lunch or go and do something else um, or walk down to the beach. Our hotel was right by the beach, which was perfect. Oh, the Friday Pattern Company Avenue jumpsuit is brilliant for putting on in the evenings. So there were lots and lots of other garments that I sewed up, you know, over the years that I took on holiday with me as well that came in really useful. Like the Ogden cami came in really useful to go with the shorts as well. Um, but I just wanted to share in this video some of my August makes, um, particularly with my holiday in mind. Do let me know in the comments below which of those was your favourite. Um, it's really hard for me to pick a favourite. Um, I really loved sewing for my family, so I think I'd have to pick either the shirts or the swimsuits or both. Um, it really makes me happy when they ask me to sew things for them and I see them wearing them as well. Thank you as always for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button. You get notified of when I bring out my next video. I always bring out a video on a Sunday and that's usually a roundup of what I've been getting up to that week in terms of fabrics and patterns and what I've been busy making. And sometimes I'll share other things that I've seen in the sewing world as well. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.